Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we have two AI tools that have merged together Gogito style, and what we've got here is actually pretty clever. The first half of this equation is Plask. Now, Plask makes a uh, AI solution that can take um, a single camera reference of movement and automatically create character rigs from it. I've covered it in the past on this channel. Uh, it is definitely a cool tool, and it does allow you to do basic um, animation rigging, literally just using a single camera, and then their AI does the rest of the work. The other part of this equation is something called stable diffusion. You have no doubt heard of stable diffusion at this point in time. It is part of the family of uh, AI image generators. You've got stable diffusion, you've got Dolly, uh, you have mid journey. Uh, again, there's all kinds of ethical ramifications about where they get their data from. Uh, that is a conversation for another video. We've had it many times in the past, but just do be aware, there is some sourcing issues from where these data models actually learned from. Uh, but we're not talking about that today. Specifically, what we are talking about is this merger, the good joke. Gogito of sorts, and it is Plask now has a stable diffusion powered by their mobility tool. So what you do basically is you set up a pose and you give it a prompt and then it feeds that information into stable diffusion. So basically it is a rig driven stable diffusion generator. Obviously it is for creating characters and characters alone. In the world of game development, I can see this being used for... Um, title screens, character icons, that kind of things. So let's jump in and take a look at how this works. If you want to go ahead and check it out, it's available at plask.ai. Now, funny enough, if you want to check out Plask itself, it's been delegated to this little link over here and it's now called Plask Motion. So uh, by the way, this is completely free and you can see one of the works I already did. So this one is my own work. Uh, it works with you set up uh, the rig, that you want here, which by the way, controlling this rig is an absolute nightmare, but I'll show you a way around that in just a minute. So you set up the rig of your character, you make your rig either male or female. So you got uh, definitely different proportions based off which rig you go. I used a male, uh, sorry, female in this particular case because you can see down here, there is um, the prompt for it. So I did a pretty girl with a headache covering her ears and the four results that it generated given this uh, and the framing of this. So you notice the the body layout here pretty much exactly matches how I uh, laid it out within this viewport. So how your character is set up is important. So if you do this, you're going to get a much different result than if you do this. So uh, it's the on-screen portion is the only part that is important in this regard. Uh, and you can see here it generated four different results. And all these results actually are quite quality. So here is one, two, three, Four. Now, one of the things I do find about uh, these models in general, and it might be just because of the, the learning data that it learned from, I, is they tend to be pretty sexualized. This is the natural nature of the beast here. Um, so if you want to have it not that way, make sure you put prompts in. By the way, you also, if you come here to the advanced category, you've got the ability to set negative prompts. Uh, and also down here, you can pick the uh, sample model to actually work from. We're not going to focus on the advanced stuff today. You can also see some presets of what prompts other people use to some of these are very elaborate. Now, weirdly enough, when I use the presets, it does seem to completely ignore the uh, pose, the entire purpose behind this Plask integration. So I don't really get it. So you see here, we're getting a realistic style at this point. Let's switch this over to anime style. Again, you can see a variety of different presets to work from. I'm going to use the same pose, same prompt, but we're going to have it create an anime character instead. You just click render, and then what happens is... Uh, more or less, there's this prompt here that they're getting slammed and it's going to take up to 10 minutes. That's a lie, at least from my experience. I haven't had it take more than a minute yet. We can see here the progress bar of how long it's going to take. Now we're about 10% done. I'm not gonna make you wait for this to finish. So I will pause this and be right back when it's done. All right, so it took about another 40 seconds, perhaps. Uh, so here you can see the four results that we got here. So here is our character. And you see here, again, it's following the exact profile of what we set here. It does do some uh, license on the uh, location of the hands, because again, I think my hand is actually clipping through my head with the way I posed it over here. You can see one result, uh, two result, three result four result all really impressive i gotta say this, this and then if you like the, what you've got here this is all completely free uh so basically just come on in here click the download button and what it will do is bring down a zip file let's open up that zip file and what you'll see is you've got your four different images available right there you do have control over the size of them up here by the way uh so that is uh, the results here again single prompt and i don't think i would reject a single one of these all of them look pretty solid again there tends to be a certain amount of um hyper sexualization in the generate results. Oh, and we seem to have an auto slideshow thing going on there. I'm not sure what that was. It wasn't me doing it. Now, one thing that you're going to find really frustrating with this is setting your 
poses up. And the weirdest thing here, and this might just be, a, this is a fairly early on tool. I haven't found a way to reset the pose, which is really, really weird. You'd be able to think you'd be able to go back to it like a default T pose or something. I don't know how to do it. So when you come back to it later on, you're going to get wherever you were last time. Now you're going to notice on this character, we got a number of different joints. So you see here, we got these, um, these joints between bones. And you got the bones in between. So here we got that bone set. Here we got this bone. So what I can do is I can basically select that guy and I can use the orbiting rotate. So you can rotate things like so or on a different axis like so. Or what you can do is using like an IK based thing, inverse kinematic, is you can actually bring the joints around this way. Now I do wish there was an option and I hope it comes in the future to not have the, the gizmo be a local transform. I wish it was actually using standard axes. It makes it very, very hard to pose things. But if you want, you can move characters around like this and set up the pose. It does use, again, an inverse kinematic setup there. I just find this entire thing really, really frustrating to work with. But again, you're basically just grabbing these joints here and then either using the W key to move them, well, you can't move that, that's only rotatable, but here we go like that, so you can orbit them, and you can do the rotate using the industry standard E key, or let's grab this bone over here, like so, and you can do the W key, and we can move things around. So that is how you will pose your character, and I do find using this guy is just absolutely frustrating. By the way, Alt, left mouse button for orbiting, Alt, right mouse button for panning, now we're back after a completely seamless edit that you can't totally, totally different picture on screen. Uh, yeah, sometimes this Plask product actually flakes out really bad. It stops taking input, stops going to the server. So we had to pause things and come back. So one thing I got to want to demonstrate to you though, is even though I really can't stand using uh, this posing tool, just basically the tools themselves. the nice thing is you don't necessarily have to. What you can actually do is upload a post. Plask after all did start life as an AI powered, um, you know, rig maker from images. So what you can actually do here is come up here and go to the plus button here and upload an image. So show all the images on my desktop. So example, I have this one right here. We'll go take a look at what it is. So this is a girl doing a karate style kick. And what I'm going to do is upload that to their server. It's going to take a little bit of time for it to process. Now, there are a couple of annoyances here on their site. For example, I can't delete previous ones I've done. So this list just keeps growing and growing and growing. But the cool thing here is instead of actually having to uh, rig things yourselves, you can just send an image of what you want the pose to look like, and it will create the bones and such for you. So I'm going to, I've already uploaded this one in the past. So I'll show you a previous upload. So here we've got our character doing a karate style kick. So you don't have to actually do anything really. You may have to do a little bit of tweaking. So for example, if we look at this one here, the uh, the hands are a little weird. I'm gonna leave them as they are, but, and you're gonna wanna frame the shot once again. So whatever you're going to do is going to be predicated by how it is positioned in this frame, but we got a nice kicking motion here. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, a robot, we'll keep this very vague, kicking. All right, so we'll stick with the, uh, the anime style here. Um, and we'll go ahead and render, see what that does. Again, this will take a little bit of time and it's definitely slowed down. Their servers are having issues. By the way, you can really tell uh, it just was rapidly snapping between the poses and down here, the render button kept being disabled. So when their server flakes out, you're going to know it. All right, so I'll be back when this is done. And boom, here is our result. So there's the pose, and there you can see how it was used, and bang, it, it followed it quite nicely again. Uh, we got a couple of different results here. So let's see the different versions that it created. Now, it did make them predominantly female-ish, so I wonder how much of that is driven by the femaleness of the uh, mannequin itself, or it's just that's the, what we've been requesting. But here you can see the end result is it's pretty solid, to be honest. I'm actually quite impressed. But I leave the questions up to you. What do you think of Plask's take on Stable Diffusion? Have you checked it out? Are you going to check it out? Let me know in the comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.